Hi, my name is Rachel Emery. I'm the curator of Elephants and Rhinos here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. And today we're at the Elephant Habitat with our multi-generational herd of seven Asian elephants. Elephant endothelial tropic herpes virus, also known as EHV, is a herpes virus that can cause a deadly hemorrhagic disease in young elephants. So all elephants carry some form of the virus, both in human care and in the wild. So typically the virus is latent within the body, just like any herpes virus. But the problem comes in when something happens called a primary infection. So when a calf gets a primary infection, they don't have the antibodies to fight the infection off themselves. So then it turns into a systemic or a whole body infection, which causes a lot of issues. EHV is the largest single cause of death in Asian elephants in North America, with a mortality rate of about 64%. Early detection of EHV, especially in our young elephants, is really, really critical. This disease can really escalate fast. It can escalate within 12 to 24 hours to the point where the first time you, you detect the disease, the animal could die within 24 hours. And so that really means that we have to have that early detection in order to get any sort of effective treatment in there and have a chance at reversing the disease. Back in October 2015, unfortunately, we lost our very first elephant calf, Mei Li, to EEHV. That was really devastating, obviously, for the community as well as all of us here at the zoo. And when we looked at that, we tried to learn from it and determine what could we do better to try to prevent that from happening in the future. And really, the only thing that we could really determine that we could do that would make a big difference is reduce the amount of time that it took for us to get a result back on a screening sample of one of the elephants. And we also wanted to increase our surveillance. We wanted to see if anybody was shedding the virus at any particular point in time, which might heighten us to look at the calves a little bit more closely. EHV preparedness is our number one priority as a team. It's something that we think about every single day. When we come into the barn in the morning, as elephant caretakers, the first thing we do is assess the animals, especially the two calves, and see how they're feeling, what they're looking like, and EHV is always at the forefront of our mind. In order to be prepared for an EHV case, we try to take every single day and be better than the day we were before. So we're constantly practicing behaviors with the elephants and with our staff to make sure that both parties are ready in case a case does come up. So the bath routine is probably one of the most important parts of our EHV monitoring because it starts our ability to do a behavioral assessment on the elephants every day. So every single morning we do a full visual inspection of their whole body from the top of their head down to the bottom of those feet. And during that time, we can really assess how they're feeling and how they're doing. We really want to look at every single part of their body. Importantly as well, we always look inside their mouth. We want to check the color of those gums, their tongue, check their teeth, make sure everything's looking good from the night before. In order to screen and monitor our animals for EEHV, we do weekly testing. We do that by collecting a blood sample, which the animal caretakers do by getting a sample from the back of the ear. They have some large veins on the back of their ears and the animals are actually trained to participate in that behavior and allow a sample to be collected. We also collect a trunk wash sample. We put some saline up into their trunk. They're trained to forcefully exhale that into a bag so that we can get some really good cells and DNA of virus if it's present. And then that helps us determine if the animal is actually shedding the virus. Well, today we were able to get blood samples and trunk wash samples on all of the elephants within our herd. Once we get those samples, we bring them here to the Joan Kirkpatrick Animal Hospital Laboratory and we process them. We run a CBC, which tells us what their white blood cell count is, what their platelet levels are. If there's any abnormalities, we might know that there's something going on. So we do that weekly as well. And then we take the sample and we start processing it to run the PCR. When we're running the PCR, PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. We're actually looking for the DNA of the specific virus within the sample and whether it's present or not. And if it is present, we're trying to determine at what level, what quantity of virus is present in the sample. And this machine actually runs the sample and detects if that DNA is there. Once we get the sample, we're actually able to get the result the same day, generally within a period of about four or five hours, which is really critical for the treatment if it's present and for monitoring the situation if the virus does show up. We are the first institution outside of the National Zoo that has brought PCR in-house and we do our own. Another way that we can monitor for EHV is by performing heart ultrasounds on the calves. 
Ty Robbie will come over. She'll present her foot on the stool to allow us better access to where her heart would be. And then the way that we practice this is with a mock ultrasound probe. We still use the gel. So McKay will go, go up to Ty Robbie, touch her in the location, apply the probe, apply pressure, scan all over in that area to simulate as close as possible to when we do an actual ultrasound. Another way that we monitor for EHV in the barn is by recording blood pressure on each of our elephants. So we have individual reference ranges for each elephant so we know what their normal high and normal low is. And then each week we can record that blood pressure and make sure that it fits within that range. Well, unfortunately there is no cure for EEHV, but with a lot of research and dedicated staff and time, we have determined that there are some different treatments that have actually resulted in success of animals recovering from the disease. Another key element of the treatment process for EEHV is administering rectal fluids. So every week we practice with the elephants doing a rectal clean out and administering rectal fluids. It's extremely important for hydration for them. Elephants actually absorb fluids very well through their rectum. So we can really help hydrate a dehydrated elephant that way in times when they are really ill. One of the most important aspects of EHV treatment is administering antiviral medication. So we do practice with our elephants to swallow capsules. They have vitamin C inside and then they get a yummy apple juice drink afterwards to make it an overall very positive experience. All of this EEHV training and preparedness did come into action when Akara was a year and a half old and she did have her own EEHV episode. So we did detect the virus in her blood at that time and we treated her for several days and she did recover just fine and is now out with the herd here today. The Oklahoma City Zoo is a part of a bigger community called the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Being a part of the AZA community, we're able to collaborate with one another on the best training techniques, protocols, and treatment plans. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums also developed the Asian Elephant Saving Animals from Extinction program, also known as AZA SAFE. One of the goals of Asian Elephant SAFE is to help with the treatment and monitoring of EEHV, not just in North America, but globally, and to help give support in the native range states in Asia. All of the AZA organizations that care for elephants are really dedicated to research into EEHV. It's an issue that affects all of us and affects elephants in the wild as well, and it affects their conservation status. And so there's a lot of research that's being done and a lot of effort put in towards learning more about this disease. And through a lot of those research efforts and collaborating with some of the top researchers in the field, we're actually really close to getting a vaccine. Here at the Oklahoma City Zoo, myself and my team are caring for elephants every single day, but there are things that you can do to help as well. Those things include visiting your local AZA zoo, like the Oklahoma City Zoo, and supporting their conservation efforts. You can also learn more about elephant conservation through supporting our partners, such as the International Elephant Foundation. The International Elephant Foundation supports many different elephant conservation projects, including the development of a future EEHV vaccine. Because Asian elephants are an endangered species, every single calf is extremely valuable. This means that we are not only giving everything that we can for these calves, but for the population as a whole.